among the hundreds of congregants, Samantha Revesai, the mother of one, has been searching for employment since arriving in the country six years ago. She's just a visitor with a prayer request. I really wanted to go and maybe the, the pastor pray for me so I can get a job. I'm so displeased. The 27-year-old has been in trouble with her landlord for missing her rental payment. The member of the church came to me and say, you want money, right? And I say, yes, I want money. Because right now things are not fine with me, so I really want money. Then they said, um, we want you to come next week. For the first time, they didn't tell me what to do. She attended the prophetic salt service and she believed God for a healing man of God. When Revesai honors the invitation, it turns out to be a Sunday of testimonies. For three years, she was HIV positive. For three years? Three years, man of God. Tell me what happened. They gave me a paper that was uh, two of them. The first one was written, I was positive because they already knew my name and my surname. So they went, I don't know where, to the doctor and say I was HIV positive. And the other one was saying, I'm now negative. Three years is torment. Revesai does not get to speak for herself though. She was tormented past the elf by that disease. On Monday, she went for a test. And she saw the test was negative. But just something said in her, let me check again on Thursday. Come on now. <laughs> and Pastor, when she went back on Thursday, she got the exact result, HIV negative. Yay! God is fighting for us. I was not positive. I've never been positive. They wanted me to act as if I was positive and then pastor prayed for me and I, I get healed so they can attract other people to come to the church. But they promised me money. How much? They said they were going to give me 1.5 every month. It's a profoundly painful disintegration of a human being. To use that vulnerability for, uh, for any kind of religious gain which is false, um, I quite frankly think is criminal, you know. And just because it's church doesn't necessarily give it, or church in inverted commas, doesn't necessarily give it credence. Ever since then, hers has been a life full of regret. So I don't want them to publish me anymore. As you can see here on this... Coming out for the first time, Yes. This year, yeah. Mm -hmm. This one. Did you also um, recruit her? Yes, this is me. And this As is you can uh, see. the lady that you were at. This man reveals to us he was the mastermind behind the alleged act. Bless you. She comes Sunday morning, boss. I, I tell her that uh, it's not a big deal. I will just give you a paper, a card, written you were uh, positive. Now you are negative. So it's easy. You, you don't talk anything. This Pastor Jackie will talk for you. 33-year-old Bless in Kwemelau further reveals his role was to recruit. Yes. He claims he trained visitors to stage disability during sermons. I was uh, going to them and speak to them clearly. Guys, you know what the Nigerian did when they act? We are going to act. When you are acting, we want our things to, to be as real. So when we say you are crippled, you must act as that. God heals you of HIV. HIV Four years. free. Revesai was not his only enlisted actor. There were many others. Five years. We were something like uh, three to four teams which were doing the same job. So for me, they were coming like uh, blessing. We need 10 peoples for wheelchairs, uh, three ladies, which will say we were having breast cancer. Uh, we want somebody like, uh, she said I was deaf. 
when the pastor prays for her or for him, he or she will say, I'm, I'm now hearing. You see? So I was uh, finding people, telling them, uh, this job is like this, like this, like this. He says he was given more role play because of his physique. The time I arrived at the church, I take that person, I lift him or her up as if he is crippled. I put him or her on the wheelchair. I put another one in the basement floor, overflow, inside, at the different corners. I see there's a, a, a name written Tande. Kwemelao says a chain of communication would be initiated and SMSs would be passed on, giving instructions to actors. He shows us a barrage of text messages. He claims are sent to actors during a service in 2017. I text here yeah, while we were on the church because we go with this lady. We say to her, we will tell you your scripture there. So when we arrived there, the lady I was working with, she, she sent me the message to say, tell that lady that she was not hearing for three years, as you can see. Yeah. Then I tell her, not hearing for three years. Then I see she never replied. I say, come out. She come out of the church and I explain to her that if the pastor prayed for you, even somebody, if somebody talking to you, don't answer, you are deaf, don't hear. But after she declares, you start screaming, jumping, as you can see here. Scream now and say, I can hear, I can hear. Go in front now, you see. Kwemelao reveals this was also extended to special services. And then this, this other one, uh, this other one, she was on the wheelchair, this guy. Uh, it was the VIP service. So the theme was like, break the platter and crush the head of the viper. So I tell him here, after breaking the platter, you will shake and stand because he was on the wheelchair as if he is crippled. You and see? he was not crippled? He was not. Undeterred. Alleluia Ministries International has downplayed the allegations of faking miracles. For anybody to then allege that the miracles we see, whether it's in the church or on the street, are either staged or people are paid for, I think that's ridiculous. Because then it means we're praying to a wooden God. We're praying to a God who does not manifest his power. We're praying to a God who does not work miracles. And that's not the God we pray for, we pray to. But what would happen almost two years later has left the whole country and the religious sector in shock. February 24, 2019. Just another normal church service at the Alleluia Ministries International. He's Jehovah! Yes, he is. We bless your but it doesn't take long before oh Alf Lugau's sermon is interrupted. We Men of God, speak to myself, me. Myself, I went outside. There is a family that is about to take a corpse to Zimbabwe. Hey. The man has allegedly been dead for three days. He died in my head. <laughs> See this man. And uh, you, this is your brother? Yeah, this is my brother. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. So did, where did you keep the body? The body was on the mortuary. Jesus. This body is coming from the mortuary. Yes. This man died since Friday. Hey. On close inspection, there are visible signs of life. Where is the media now? And what happens next? has Elliot. left tongues waking. Elliot! Elliot! Jesus! Lift your hands. 
Lift your hands. Miracala Massa. Barabasa Tabasa. To the congregants, an unprecedented scene is unfolding before their eyes. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind whatsoever. I will stake my life on the fact that I, if there's, I believe that as if that wasn't real, I'm not real. The church has struggled right from its very inception with, um, shall we call it gimmicks. I think the story is gaining all this momentum because people are desperate for miracles. And of course, the, the whole Christian story is a story about resurrection. So why can we not have resurrections nowadays? Um, but they're very, 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 very few and far between, if ever, since the resurrection of Jesus. So I think that when we unpack what's happened, the whole thing was staged. Uh, you can almost say, you know, can the country take a joke? <laughs> it's terrible because there's a lot more of this happening. There's almost a competition of gimmicks. I will do a bigger gimmick than yours. Mine is going to be much more you know, of a pizzazz than the other one. The issue about being people being raised from the dead is something that historically has been captured as true. But it's, it's, it's sad when it gets abused and it becomes staged. Um, uh, in that way, I think it, it, it affects people's beliefs in, in what is authentically God's word. And, and, and people end up not being sure even when they see authentic things. Which of God but to Alleluia Ministries International congregants, this is a lifetime miracle far from a hoax. Uh, Pastor Alf laid hands on him, prayed on him, and spoke life into him, and he slowly but surely sat up, and they helped him out of the coffin, and he walked into the, into the church. Now, this is very undramatic. Um, that's clearly not how it happened, but yeah, that's uh, long, long and short of what happened. So, a dead man was resurrected. But days before his alleged resurrection, Elliot missed work. The machine operator would then face a disciplinary hearing. That week, we found out what he was doing. And uh, the guys here who are friends with him, because he's from Zimbabwe, told me that he's done a wheelchair stint and he's done a couple of other stints with the same church. And from what I can understand, his wife and his sister and his aunt worked with the pastor. And that's how he got in. No one. But to others, this is nothing out of the ordinary. Somehow it then becomes a way of making money. Now you match that, and my, this Malusi Incorporated uh, promises all kinds of uh, supernatural things through the gimmicks that I display and act up, then you've got a market. Because you are a society that's looking for that kind of thing. I think we have a lot of commercialism that happens in most religions. I think it's something that all religions have to struggle with. And I personally feel that the way that a religious leader talks about money and manages money is one of the clearest signs of seeing where their heart is at. I do think that it is shocking to use people's vulnerabilities to whip up emotions, to get people's money 
um, and to do all sorts of things that benefit you. But we have to recognize that the world is full of that kind of thing. The church has defended itself, insisting it never claimed raising a man from the dead. Ironically, the congregants were still sold to the miracle as true. He was in a mall for two days! I stand by every single word that comes out of Pastor Al's mouth. Our visit to Elliot's residence in El Mafias on the east of Pretoria has revealed more. This is where his family has been living for two years. The alleged resurrection of the father of two has since been the talk of town. So, Hey, Nagizurne, Tabe Barefes Abian, Managri Abapak, once. But what of a fellow is going to be able to go? Yanot Hamika Ali, who I keep so well important for Ufila Yang. And those sharing the same yard with Elliot and his wife are convinced this is a failed act for cash. Lady, is she a landlord here or not? Uh, she's not a landlord. Napa Agna landlord, Pune Keteka. Nelly, not her real name, knows the couple well. She reveals she has snapped repeated invitations to the church. But if ever I was in Pefana Nekundu and Nyoga, Umfundi Sibazak Farayon, a mega preacher, Uzo Kulumutum, Doctor, what and what, a Makala Atile, Mega Tanazela Agbamba, Logogia Puma, Abantubani Gelimali. And that's why they recruit the other people. They say if you recruit someone, you get paid a hundred and fifty. If maybe you act as a cripple, and then you get 3,500 rand. They don't want the South African because the South African, they can trade very easily. But the Zimbabwean, they are untraceable. Elliot's close friend and countryman, Paul, not his real name, tells us he last saw Elliot on Thursday of February 21st, the day before the alleged death. <laughs> Medical teams in the province also remain baffled. None of their members received a dispatch call to attend a death case on that Friday. We don't have a record of the specific call um, to, to per se for, for this case now. It's a paramedic. No autopsy report either, meaning it would have been a natural death. But if that was the case, there would have been the next crucial step. And so, so basically, you will be declared dead by a paramedic. You will then go to an undertaker. The undertaker will get a medical doctor to do a certificate of death. None of the implicated funeral parlors have confirmed receiving Elliot's body. The car was hired, and the family said, they have a body at Black Phoenix Funerals. And from there, they bought a coffin from Black Phoenix Funerals because that coffin is not for case of case. We don't have that coffin in our mortuary. We would never have a deceased here. We've never, it was not, not, not even, he didn't pass by here, he did nothing at all. Jesus, 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 Jesus. The vexed Jesus, question Jesus. remains was this a similar alleged hoax like previous others? And where is the so called dead man? Even us at Nelma Pierce, we're waiting. Maybe we can escape the country because they say the Zimbabwean they're untraceable. That's why. An ongoing controversy drawing continuous condemnation from the religious sector. I also think that the public, the general public, 
has got to begin to start recognizing that the journey with God involves your mind. It's not an abandonment of your intellect. And that the questions that people ask about credibility, the questions that sometimes for people who are charlatans are proposing, need to be listened to. This chaos that we are faced with cannot continue forever. And it can continue for more than one more year. It's too painful uh, to the whole nation. We can't sustain the pain anymore. But these have been the norm in various places of worship in the country, where spirituality has come in different forms. Eat quickly. And more often than not, the menu is off limit. Eat quickly. Today, no time, no time. You eat quickly. It's a buffet serving vile cocktail. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Is it nice? How does it taste like? It's sweet. Other worshippers see it as a manifestation of supernatural powers, but some do not subscribe to the notion. This is only characteristics of church bodies that are not in an, in an organized setup where they have a covering body. The church in South Africa has been there for a long time. We never used to hear about these things or to the extent that we hear about them. Because where there's accountability and where there's proper protocols, there are ways in which those who defect among us can be talked to within those organizations. What kind of a profession is this where your own peers cannot even call you to order? It's the first of its kind in this country. Whatever profession you have at whatever level, there is a body that regulates you. And all we're asking for is that order. Only those who drink it. How does it taste like? But could all these amount to abuse? It's sweet. It is actually the violation, the fundamental violation of human rights. And because it takes place under the name of what we call so-called churches, they're not any different to some crazy cult, to be completely honest with you. So I can go and start some kind of crazy band somewhere and in the name of Jesus, get you into such a pickle in your head that you no longer know the beginning from the end. Wake up! Self-styled prophets are charismatic and powerful. Among the poor and sick, the desperate and gullible. Skeptics suggest no intervention will stop it, but the hopes of many are on the lawmakers.